Welcome to your second project that you're going to learn um, in digital media. This project is going to teach you some experience with the gradient tool, the paint bucket tool, also rulers and guides. So we'll go ahead to our class Digital Media 1 here. Come on down to first grading term. Here you can see we've turned in all these, the previous projects. Now we're here, type tool, gradient tool, pencil tool. So we're going to recreate a book cover. You can see an overview of the books. If I click on this link, actually, it shows you Amazon was originally the world's largest bookstore. They now sell a bunch of different things, but you can see they have a bunch of books, a bunch of book covers. This is Baby's H2. We scroll to the right, we can see other books, a bunch of different books that you can see. So the book we're going to recreate is this, Max at Night. You can see in the background, it has a gradient. It also has stars. It has a moon. It has a little gradient and also glows. Then we have the ground. That's a gradient as well. Then we have the cat here and we have this text. So far in the class we haven't shown you how to do text um, or the gradient tool, but you know how to do this. This is simply the elliptical marquee. So to start, let's blow this guy up. We're going to come over into Photoshop. We're going to make this the size of US paper. So we're going to go to File, New. We're going to change this to book cover, and this is max at night. The preset we're going to change to US paper. But that makes it 8.5 by 11. Also 300 resolution, which is print quality. 300 pixels per inch. And we're going to change the background to transparent. Go ahead and click OK. So here you can see we have our background area. And I'm going to go ahead and call this background. So first thing we want to do is coming back over here, you can see it's a straight line directly across. So I could use the marquee tool, but I want to show you something new in Photoshop. You can always use you can always use guides to drag out to be more precise, to make boxes, to make anything you want. To do that, we need to see rulers. So we want to show rulers. So you're going to go to View, Rulers. What that does is it shows this ruler here. It also shows this ruler here. And it allows you to be more precise. So if you wanted something to be one inch, you could drag out there. You could drag out there. And then you could do whatever you want. So you can drag from the left or the right. I'm going to drag these back. What we want to do is drag from the top to a place kind of like here to kind of match the sky. So I'm going to do the sky and then the bottom. To do that, use my marquee tool. Make sure I'm using my rectangular one. I'm going to click and drag this top area because I only want the top area. Now this is going to be the new tool, the gradient tool. We've used the paint bucket tool here where it simply fills this area. With the color that we have. Now what we want to use is the gradient tool. So I'm going to go ahead and select looks like a teal and in the background is kind of a more of a dark blue like that. So to use a gradient tool, you can do a gradient between the foreground and background. You can do a between the foreground and nothing. A bunch of different things. Click and hold on the paint bucket tool, and you can see the gradient tool is a part of that. And remember, anytime you select a tool, you want to double check your options bar here. So you can see my gradient tool. Right now, this is saying I want the foreground to the transparent. If I click and drop this down, they kind of give you some presets. If you wanted to do a rainbow, those type of things. 
I want this, and if I mouse over it, you can see it says foreground to background, foreground to transparent, this is black to white, red to green, violet to orange. They give you some, and you can add more here if you want it. I just simply want the foreground to the background, so I'm going to select that. Next, you have to look at these options for your gradient tool. The type of gradient you want. So this is a linear gradient. This is a radial gradient. This is an angled gradient. This is a reflected gradient and a diamond gradient. Let's show you the differences. So I click on the linear one. I click and drag down to use my gradient tool. And you can see it's a linear gradient. It goes from one color to the other. If I select my radial gradient, I click and drag down, you could see it's more of like a circle. It's, it's a radial gradient. It goes like that. Here's my angled gradient. You could see it goes around. So if you were trying to do an edge, right? This is more like a cylinder. So if I do this, it's like two linear gradients. It's both sides of these. And then here's a diamond gradient. You can see it kind of has that. So if we look back here, if we look at the sky, it's more of a radial gradient. So we're going to select radial here. And how it really works, if I click and drag, if I could drag a little bit, you can see the circle small. But I really want to drag a lot. Or I can drag from down here, wherever you start to drag from. And you can see here it's kind of teal and it goes up to the darker area. The darker is really at the top. So over here I'm going to come back and do it again. And go like that. Now I could make it a little bit darker, but I'm kind of happy with that. If I wanted to make it darker, I would simply change this. I take off, show only web colors, and I can come down. You can see it's a little darker. And I simply drag again over this area. And that's kind of what I, I, I want. So I have that. The radial gradient looks very close to this, right? Come back here. I'm going to select my rectangular marquee tool again. I want to use my guide, and I'm going to drag around the bottom. And now, let's check out the gradient for this. It's kind of a linear. There's a flat line, but then there's a linear gradient at the bottom. So I'm going to drag another flat line across. So here, there's kind of a flat line that he's sitting on. And let's change these colors. It looks like they're kind of in this spectrum. So kind of a more of a red-ish. So that line across, we come back and look at it. It's just a, that orange line where he's kind of sitting on. It's like a ledge. And then this goes down. So that's the orange area. I'm going to go ahead and drag this area. And to do fill that in, we're going to use a paint bucket tool. Oh, here's a problem. My opacity is 10%. So make sure you check your options. It should be 100. And then now when I use my paint bucket tool, normal opacity 32. Nothing is highlighted. There's a problem. So always there's something. Select and drag that area. Now you can see. I didn't have anything highlighted. That was uh, the error. I was like, what is going on? So that's kind of the ledge. And you can see the ledge is here where he's sitting on. Then it has a linear gradient down. So I'm going to select this. I'll drag over here. Go back to my gradient tool. I want to select this area here. Drag down. 
Actually, I'll do it in reverse. I don't know. I'll try it down. And you can see I kind of have my background with just the sky and the ground. It looks very similar to this. Later on, I'll show you how to do textures and those type of things. So let's continue our background. Let's add this moon. So on here, that's our background with our sky, right? Let me make a new layer. I'm going to call it moon. Now to create the moon, you should know how to do this. We've done this in the previous assignment using flags. I'm going to select my elliptical marquee tool. I'm going to drag a moon up. Kind of where I want it. Well, I'll just drag a perfect moon. And then if I hold space, I'm holding space on my keyboard, I can move it around as I drag. So I want a really big moon. So say something like that. So I've positioned it. I'm also going to use my gradient tool for this. I'm going to select like a pure white. For my background, I'm going to select like a gray. And this is a circle, so I'm going to go back to my gradient tool and select a radial gradient. So again, if I drag a little bit, it goes like that, but I really want to drag kind of to the edge. And you can see it kind of makes the moon more. I'm going to make that a little darker so I can have some more contrast. And until you can do it till you like it, right? So I kind of like that. Now, when this is highlighted, people always ask, well, how do I unselect it? So if I go to select up at here, I can go deselect. Now there's my moon, but I put it on a different layer because I'm going to introduce you to something called layer effects. All your different layers over here, you can add certain effects to, and you can find that at the bottom right here. You can see here it says FX, which is short for layer effects, and they have bevel, stroke, inner shadow, outer glow, satin, color overlay, gradient overlay, pattern overlay, outer glow, and drop shadow. So our moon glows, so we want to select an outer glow. You really didn't see anything. It's really small because our canvas is really big. So I'm going to scale this up by pulling out the size. You can kind of see our moon now is glowing. And if I wanted, you can see it has that harder edge. If I made this a little bit lighter, all right? And I just simply dragged over. Oops. Just drag out some. You can see I have my moon that's glowing. Now, next up we want to do, we have our moon. His moon is a little bit more yellow. So actually, let's do that, right? Come up here, change this. It's a little more yellow. So I can go something like that. And again, you could, to reselect this, if I command and Mac on the layer, it actually will select everything that's on that layer. And I want something like that. So uh, a little bit more yellow. Now, we're going to do stars. We, draw, we drew stars in the previous. These are just dots, but we're actually going to do official stars to make this a little bit better. So draw stars. We use, remember, our polygon tool to make our flags in the previous lesson. We'll call this big star. So. I'm going to click. I'm going to make the biggest star possible, right? I'll come here. I'll come here. I'll come here. I'll come back up and connect it. Then I can fill it in using my paint bucket tool. And I deselect it, doing select, deselect. So now I have a star there. 
really big star, but we remember we want to make these smaller. We drew it big so we can have a perfect star. And then we're going to use the Move tool. And I can move it around, right? If I don't really want to move it, I want to scale it and move it. So up here in your Options bar again, you have Show Transform. I'm going to scale this down to something I like. Whenever you're scaling, you have to approve it over here or not approve it. I'm going to put it Approve. I can take my Transform tools off and I kind of have a star. Now I want to zoom in, so I can zoom in down here. Or you can use the toolbar here. So if I did this, so I want to scale it a little bit more. I'll go back to my Move tool. I'm going to scale it down some. And I'll approve it again. And take my scaling off. So I kind of like that as my big star. So remember with the Move tool, if you hold Alt on a Windows or Options on a Mac, it becomes a duplicate tool. So you can see my, my mouse now is two mice. I can pull these out like that and make more big stars. Just various areas. Now when you're doing that, if you notice over here, I made one big star. As I dragged out more, all of them got copied over. So if I wanted to merge, I would go to Layer, very bottom, merge down. Again, Layer, very bottom, merge down. You can see these are starting to merge. Layer, very bottom, merge down. Layer, and this is how you merge layers. The shortcut is Command-E or Control-E on the Windows. So I've merged all these. I, I left this one because I'm going to make another copy of it and make a smaller star. So I've merged all these into one layer, but I'm going to take this before I merge that again. I'm going to do another duplicate. I'm going to scale this one down even more. So let me zoom in. like that. I'll take that out. So this is going to be medium star. So again, this is all my big stars. I'm going to merge that one down one more time. Layer, merge down. Now, my medium stars, that's just this guy here. I can do the exact same thing. Use my move tool with the duplicate. I can add a couple medium stars around like this. And again, I want to merge all these to one medium star level. So you go back to layer, scrum down, merge down. So I merge all these. So again, these are all my medium stars, but this is my one. I'm going to make one smaller star. So pull this out. I call this small star. Let's zoom back in because I make it smaller. Show my transform controls are that. It's going to be super small. Take my transfer controls off. So that's a super small star, right? These are all my medium stars. I'm going to turn these back on and merge that down. Now let's drag a couple medium stars, small stars out. So you're kind of making your stars. And again, I have to merge all my small stars. So I go layer, <coughs> merge down. And you can see the camp command shortcut here. I'm going to do that. And you can see I'm merging all of these over here. 
So I have a small star, medium star, my small star are these, my medium stars are these, my big stars are these. Now, just like our moon kind of glows, these are separate layers, so they can glow as well. So we can go back to effects. We can click on outer glow again. And this is for my big stars. And then I can kind of scale them out. And now my big stars, click OK, have a glow. Same thing, go to medium stars. Click on this. Outer glow. I'm looking at my medium stars. And you can see now they have an outer glow. And my small stars, click on my layer effects, click on outer glow. Now my small stars have an outer glow. And you, I can co collapse these layer effects, you can see. And now I really have my background. That actually have a pretty good background, one that looks similar, some ways looks better than what we currently have on the book cover. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and create a group. Click on this folder. I'm going to call this background. I'm going to put everything in my folder. And I can now collapse my folder. So everything is inside of there. So when I turn this on or off, that's my background. And I know I'm done with this, so I want to go ahead and use the lock key. So now, if I try to draw on any of these, or if I try to add anything, let's just say I wanted to add a circle here. And I wanted to do this. You could see you could not use it because the group is locked. So when you're done with an area, you can lock a group or you can even lock, let's pull this guy out, my background. So if my background was here, I actually could lock that. Uh, or I could lock the entire group. So either way, but I'm going to put this back inside. So I have that. This has been the first tutorial on how to create the book cover. Um, it showed you in this how to use guides by pulling them out. It also showed you how to use the gradient tool. Gradient tool has options up here, linear, that you can use those. This also, so that we use the marquee, right, elliptical marquee tool to create the moon again. We also added in our different layer effects. So you can see that here by clicking on the layer and clicking down here, the layer effect we use was outer glow. And then the next video, you will see how to use the pencil tool to draw this guy here and finish this up by adding in your type tool. So this video introduced you how to use the gradient tool um, to create, similar to this, the background, the moon, the, the ground, the sky, and some layer effects. Continue on to complete this book cover.